All right, I got about 20 minutes to make this video. Darley asked for a little video on circles, so I'm going to uh, sprinkle a little deeper conversation than the initial one we had yesterday. All right, so there's two things happening here that I really want to highlight. One, the Pythagorean relationship, uh, the square areas, the relationship uh, that occurs there, and two, creating a new coordinate system. All right, so let's talk about uh, the Pythagorean relationship, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I hope you've had enough practice in the last couple of weeks to realize that we're not going to work with it symbolically. We're going to look at it pictorially, right? And we've done that. You know, the the uh, this is two, this is ten. These areas, right? These areas, these areas. So therefore, this area over here has to be eight, which means that that's the square root of eight. Okay, and this is the square root of ten. And this is the square root of two, right? And squaring those and then adding up those areas. Now we've had a little practice with that. Uh, that wasn't the best example to use, but um, we don't need to talk about that. We're, we're getting good at uh, solving those relationships. So if we want to look at uh, x squared plus y squared equals d squared, all right, where we have a certain distance, you know, we've looked at the distance formula even, and we've started to get good at that. So where's the circular relationship come from? All right, so here's an X, Y axis, right? Here's your origin. And we commonly refer to this moving in the positive X direction. Okay, so if we take a certain distance and then we match it with a certain Y, then we got our X squared plus Y squared equals D squared relationship. Well, what happens if X gets smaller? This D squared is constant, right? I should probably call it C. But d squared is constant. And so if this area gets smaller, right, and that's the new area, then y squared's got to get bigger by this open space amount, right? It's got to go up. It's got to get bigger uh, because this is getting smaller. And the distance is, this area is remaining constant. Okay, trying to get at this with some pictures. Maybe over here is a little better. Slide the disc over so we'll square it up a little bit. Okay, so here's our areas. This area plus this area adds up to that area. These two areas add up to that area. So if I make this smaller, um, did I try to do that? Yeah, I guess I did over here. So that distance is now smaller, which means that the square area, vertical square area, has got to get a little bigger. So if I make this one smaller, to here, say for instance, if I shorten this, that area has got to get bigger. So I'm getting a coordinate, an X and a Y, right? Those lengths, this X and this Y, uh, now are in a coordinate system, right? This is an X, Y axis. And this one, the X gets shorter, the Y's got to get bigger. And we start to get this rotational uh, situation. Okay, feels a little awkward, the language I'm using here, but I'm hoping that, you know, what I'm talking about makes a little sense for what I just talked about, it made a little sense. Now, what happens when, I want to talk about a new coordinate system. What happens when we do X minus two squared, all right? And we do maybe Y plus three squared uh, equals some constant, some D squared, some distance, distance. All right, so let's go back to a coordinate system now. All right, just give me a second here. Getting warmed up. Well, I gotta go get another coffee. Might even have to take a trip. Trip to the old dining hall, get a coffee. I think I will. I know what happens when I don't have that cup. I make a lot of careless errors. So here we have your Descartes coordinate system, um, Cartesian coordinate system. And I like to play with this in calculus. I like to talk about what if you have an X squared axis, and stuff like that. That's another discussion. All right, so here we have X minus two. Do I have a ruler here or something? Yeah, I'll use this. Thing. All right, so this is measuring from zero, right? But I'm gonna measure from two. Uh, let's get some units here. I'm going to measure from two. What I'm really doing is creating a new axis. When I erase that, I have shortened this x-axis actually two units. 
That's a new axis. I'm measuring change from two. Okay, so for instance, if I went to the number three, I've only moved one unit, three minus two, one unit of change. Okay, so we have a new axis. I'll even put it in parentheses. All right. Now, the y-axis can be measured from anywhere, right? I don't, I don't need to measure it from zero. I can measure it from two, which that was a ruler, right? But that's only measuring vertical change, right? Doesn't, I can measure vertical change, one unit, one unit. Doesn't matter where I place that. So let me erase this and move the y-axis over here. Now, this is the y-axis in the positive direction, but I'm gonna add three units to it. One, two, three. So I'm really measuring from here. In the same way that the vertical axis can be shifted horizontally, the horizontal axis can be shifted vertically. It doesn't change how I measure things. So I now have a new ruler and I'm gonna call this the origin and my location is actually two comma negative three. And that ruler is three units bigger than the previous one we had. I hope you can see it's a little longer by one, two, three units. Okay, so this is the y plus three ruler, and this is the x minus two ruler. I gotta get an eraser here so I don't smudge the board so much. All right, and I have a new basic origin at two negative three, okay? And I am gonna shift this one over to the right a little bit. I'm gonna shift this one over to the right a little bit. It's the Y plus three ruler. It's the Y plus three ruler. And now I think maybe you can see a little Pythagorean relationship where I'm gonna call the base of the triangle X minus two, Y plus three, and I'm gonna draw a triangle. Okay. And if I look at this square area and this square area, that's not a drawn a very good square. I got to get my coffee. There we go. There we go. That's the Y plus three square. And then this, of course, is your constant. I'm going to call it C this time. That's your constant. So if this gets longer, then the area has to come out of this square because the two square areas end up adding up to a constant square. So the bigger this one gets, the smaller this one has to get, and that gives you that rotation. So the question is, how do we create these things? How do we create these statements? When given a problem, like you were given the other day, let me make up a new one uh, on the fly here. So how do we look at a relationship like uh, x squared plus 6x plus y squared minus uh, 10y, uh, let's see what that is, 9, 25, 34, let's add uh, 15, okay? So how do we find that Pythagorean relationship? Well, what we talked about the other day was that x squared plus 6x is in factored form, x times x plus 6. Well, that's not a square. And Pythagoras is based on squares. So to make this a square and to make a statement that is comparable to this, I create a new picture. Well, let's see, let's draw the picture based on that one. So I shorten the longer side, I lengthen the shorter side, and that's kind of evening off the linear capacity. God, that's a terrible term for that. But x plus three times x plus three gives us, and we've gotten good at squaring this, x squared plus six x plus nine. Well, that's not quite the same as x squared plus 6x. But it is if I subtract 9. Now, if I put numbers in here, like put the number 1 in. 1 plus 6, I get 7. Put the 1 in here. 1 plus 6 is 7 plus 9 is 16 minus 9 brings me back to 7. Looks like I've got the same calculation. But we don't write it this way. No, we write it this way. That's the same calculation as that. Okay. What's the beauty of that? Well, this is a constant number. I'm going to put it over on the constant side. Plus Pythagoras, right? We're still doing an A squared plus B squared equals C squared format. A lot of folks forget to write that. 
because they don't get the picture. But I'm hoping by drawing all these pictures, you won't forget to write that. Right. So can you tell me what I would write here? Well, I hope you just cut that in half. And I'd hope you'd get rid of the constant because there's no constant up here. There's a plus zero up here on this side, right? But I don't have a constant uh, explicitly stated up here. So minus five squared is 25. You better get rid of that too, right? So let's just square this real quick. Y squared minus 10Y plus 25 minus 25. You tell me what you get. I think I get that. So I can write this instead of that. And now that's equal to 15. All right, well, so we don't have much trouble here. We got a what? We've got an X plus three axis. We've got a Y minus five axis. And if I bring the minus nine and the minus 25 over, that's adding 34 to 15. Uh, because of the space here, I'm gonna erase these and move them over. I hope you can see that's 49. So what do we have? We have an area of X plus three squared. We have an area of Y minus five squared and we have an area of 49. Well, I bet you can tell me what that is now. That's seven, okay? So that's my radius because as this gets smaller, that's gotta get bigger. If this disappears completely, I'm straight up and I hope you can start to see that rotation. That's messy, but hopefully that was a little helpful to you, Dar Darley, all right? And you let me know if that did help or not. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video and uh, upload it and you get to watch it. Oh, no, I'll give you another one to do on your own just for practice real quick. All right, you try this one and you show me what, you tell me what the center is and what the radius is, and then I'll check the clock and see if I got time to get a coffee. So let's see, uh, let's try, how about x squared minus 8x plus y squared uh, plus 6y equals uh, 16, 25. Let's go with 75, all right? You tell me what the center and radius of that relationship is. It's not a function, it's called a relation. Uh, you try to find the center and the radius. I'm gonna do it out, hopefully a little neater than I was fooling around there before. So. Uh, you're pausing the video, you're trying it. I'm just going to do it now. So I got X minus four squared minus 16 plus Y plus three squared minus nine equals 75. All right, looks like I got X minus four squared plus Y plus three, Y plus three squared. Yes, if I added this correctly, there's 25 going to the other side, there's a hundred. All right, which happens to be 10 squared. So I'll write that, those are the square areas. So the center of this is centered at four comma negative three, and I got a radius, radius of 10. That's the problem I'm gonna ask you for every test the rest of the trimester. Okay, and maybe one last thing, I could have been two X squared minus eight X plus two Y squared plus six uh, Y. I could have done something like that equals 75, much more difficult problem, but it's still a circle. As long as the coefficients are the same, it's a circular relationship. As soon as we change the coefficients, no longer circle, we'll talk about that one later. Okay, that's enough for now, short and sweet.